What's up everybody? Let's take a look at this magnetism question. We have a uh, bar connected to some wires and essentially we're just going to let this bar go and we want to know what's going to happen, right? So the key idea here is noticing that um, you have some flux, right? You have some area and some magnetic field here and as this falls the area is increasing right area is going up and if the area is going up that means the flux is going up and if the flux goes up that means we're going to induce some EMF which ultimately means we're going to induce some current so they want to know what direction that's going to be well as we said the currents uh, sorry the area is going up so the flux is going up and then remember according to Lenz's law the I that is induced is going to create a B field that opposes the change. So if we have flux that's increasing, we want a B field that opposes this increase. So in this case, the B field right now, you can see the B fields coming out of the page. So that means the new B field should go into the page. So you'll go ahead and do your right hand rule. You'll test clockwise versus counterclockwise. And remember, you want to have a B going into the field. So when you do that, you should see that you get a counterclockwise current, which means ultimately that it's going to be going from left to right. Okay, so you're going to want to go ahead and briefly explain this answer. I'm going to put up uh, a response here in a second. There is another way to look at this, though. If you imagine this bar right here, let's imagine this bar has is filled with positive charges, right? And as these positive charges are falling, they have a velocity to them. And so if you remember, like F equals BVQ, there's going to be a force acting on those charges. So you could use your right-hand rule. Your thumb follows the velocity. Your B field's going in. This would be your thumb. B field is going in. Uh, that would be your fingers, right? And then you'll see that your palm is the force. And what you'll see when you do your right hand rule is that your force is acting this direction, okay, from left to right. And so that means all these forces are going to, all these charges are going to be pushed in this direction, and this will just complete the circuit as they start to move around, right? And so that's an alternate way of doing it using um, kind of this F equals BBQ idea to figure that part out. So here's the answer from the answer key. Two possible explanations. Uh, the first one is the first explanation that I gave, and the second one is the second explanation. So either of these would be fine. So go ahead and pause this, take a moment to read over the responses. All right, let's look at the second part of this question. So this one's uh, asking you to kind of describe what's going to happen, um, specifically describe the forces, describe the motion, and describe the, the light, right, the brightness in the bulb. Okay, so you want to kind of organize your thoughts. So let's go what's going to happen. Let's go over what's going to happen here. So obviously, you have gravity that's pulling down. Right? And initially, the velocity starts off at zero, um, so it's moving slow, right? So initially, basically, you're going to have a dim bulb. Okay, but as there's going to be an acceleration, right? You have this force acting on it, it's going to start accelerating. So uh, as it starts moving, so it begins to accelerate, as it accelerates, the brightness will increase. Okay, the faster it goes, the greater the change in flux, the greater the change in flux, the more current, and so it should get brighter. The light bulb should start to increase in brightness. Now here's an interesting thing that's going to happen. Remember we just said that the current is going to be moving through the rod this way. Well, Remember, whenever you have a current in a B field, there's going to be a force acting on it. 
Remember F equals BIL. So there's going to be a force actually acting on that rod. So you have gravity pulling down on this, but as it starts moving, as the current starts increasing, there's going to be a, another force due to the magnetic field. Now conceptually you probably know this, but if we do our right hand rule, thumb follows the current, B field's going in, you'll see that your palm is going up. So the F of B is going to be moving up on the bar. So you have an FG going this way, and then you have an FB going upwards. Okay, And in fact, as this gets faster, the force due to the magnetic field is going to increase, and eventually you're going to reach an equilibrium point where these two forces are in balance. So you kind of want to just describe what I just described. In other words, there will be a magnetic force opposing eventually it's going to reach kind of an equilibrium. Now that doesn't mean that it stopped, it just means that the forces are in balance, right? Which means it's going to reach a constant velocity. When those forces reach balance, it's going to be moving at a constant velocity. So there's still going to be a current induced, it's just going to reach some constant point, and therefore the brightness, once it reaches that constant velocity, the brightness will also be the same. So that's the basic idea of what's going on in this problem. You kind of want to kind of, you know, outline this in kind of bullet points. I would recommend on these paragraph problems you kind of do that. Make sure you're covering at least I would say four major ideas and then go ahead and put them all together in a paragraph. So let's take a look at what the answer key gave for this. So here's the question from the answer key, sorry, the answer from the answer key. So go ahead and pause this, read it over. So honestly, my personal opinion is this is a little bit overkill. And remember, you only have 15 minutes to answer this entire question. And this is a little bit too much, I think. It's not realistic to write something like this. So I went ahead and wrote something up myself that I think is probably a little bit uh, better response. So this is what I wrote up. It's a, uh, you know, it's much shorter. I kind of wrote this in maybe two, three minutes. So you want to kind of, you want to be realistic in a time situation. That last question, that last answer, I think was a little too much. So go ahead and pause this, read what I wrote. And yeah, take a moment to do that. Again, you want to just make sure you're covering the major points. You don't want to do too much. They do say that the answer should be concise. And to be honest, that last answer, I think, was uh, not that concise. All right, so the last question is asking you to kind of derive an equation here. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to be pushing this with a certain force. And as we just mentioned, as you push this with the force, last time it was gravity, this time it's going to be kind of manual. There should be an opposing force going in the opposite direction due to the magnetic field. So that would be FB. So we are moving at a constant velocity here, right? constant speed, which means these two forces should be in balance. So in other words, the push force should equal the FB. And as we just mentioned, that should be equal to B I L. Now this question does say we want an expression for velocity in terms of these things right here. So B field's good, right? And our L is good. And our force is good. So we need an expression for I. Well, you can probably tell you have resistance here. So I, we know, is uh, V over R, Ohm's law. So we have to know how do we find that voltage, okay? So we go epsilon, we're going to use epsilon here, that's how they do it in the formula sheet. So epsilon, remember that's a change in flux over change in time, okay? Now for this very specific problem, this was like the very last thing we did before craziness ensued, um, and so we didn't really get a chance to go over this, but when you do this, what you're going to see is this turns into B V L. 
In other words, the induced EMF is going to be equal to the magnetic field times the velocity it's moving times that length. So when we substitute that into here for I, right, we are going to get what B V L over R. And then let's go and throw that current way back into the beginning. So let's write this out. So we're going to have F equals B, and then we're going to multiply that by B V L over R times L. So let's just make sure our variables are good. Okay, B is good, V is good, L is good, R is good. Okay, now we do have B times B and L times L, so we can kind of simplify those. So ultimately, they do want it to be in terms of velocity. So our velocity should be equal to uh, F times R divided by B squared and L squared. And there you go. So one last comment on this. This equation, again, we kind of we didn't really get a chance to truly go over it. This only works on this very specific problem when you have a rod moving on rails here. That's the only time it works. In fact, let's just go ahead and derive this together. So we have our flux over time. Remember, our flux is B times A, so you have BA over T. Well, what is A? And again, this is a change, right? So we're changing our area. Well, our A is going to be the length of this times this distance. So this distance is increasing, this delta D is increasing, and then this is our length here. So our area is basically the length times this delta D. So we could write that as B L delta D over T. But what is delta D over T? Well, that's velocity, right? So we're left with BLV. So again, this is equation only works on this very, very specific problem. So don't just kind of blindly use it whenever you think it might be appropriate. It really only works on these kind of uh, sliding rod problems. All right. Go ahead and score yourself and let me know if you have any questions.